Greetings, hi, the War Al greets you, and welcome to another Matchmaking Academy, where you are the star for all the wrong reasons, but don't worry, we're gonna figure out what those reasons are so you can improve, so I can improve, so we can all improve at Counter-Strike Global Offensive. This is Momo, sent in the demo. He's a Master Guardian Elite player here, uh, playing on Nuke. And uh, he wanted to know a little bit about how to pre-fire players when they're juking. I think this is the round for that. And he also wanted to know a little bit about how you should adapt when you're playing on CT side against T side nuke. Now check this out. He's starting on CT side. He's 0 to 5 right now. Now keep in mind these players, very nice. Send it. Oh, look at that. He, he did everything right there. The patience, watching his spot, playing the game. Nice. Keep in mind. Players are sending in these demos, very brave to put themselves out there, put their mistakes out there for everyone to see so that we can all learn from. So make sure you don't write any disparaging comments. Now, I, I see your stupid comments. You got to cut it out, people. I think I have this rank. He doesn't do that. Oh. There we go. Momo, man, he's making it happen. Could this be the first time we don't yell at him for being a noob? Probably not. Um, so he's going up against Muggy now. One versus two. And we see... I don't know what Z Zulka is doing, but he's totally in the wrong spot. There's no reason for me to hell right now. One of them should be watching downstairs, and one of them should be watching upstairs. Like, Momo's doing the right thing. Zulka needs to go down ramp right now. And it looks like Monkey is creeping downstairs to plant. Maybe that player's AFK. He's not even moving. It's really strange. So that's 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 the first thing that we see there, Momo. All right. And his favorite fish is uh, salmon. Oh, here's the bomb plant. It's going to be going downstairs, and here it is. Oh! Oh, no! Oh, Momo! Oh, you were doing so well, Momo! Oh, you're breaking my heart, Momo! Oh, my gosh! All right, okay, so... Um... We've got, so we got some work to do. This, I think, is a more appropriate corner to talk about this situation and this sort of a technique. And we're talking about players who juke peek a corner over and over again and shoot as they, as they peek it. Or could even shoot it through the corner like that as well. And when you should shoot the player. So you're on the opposing side of it. So you have, let's say, a terrorist is peeking you from this corner right here. And is doing this peek technique. Now keep in mind, his, uh, his enemy was using a Nova. And the only real technique that you can use with a Nova, you can't do that. You can't come out and strafe back and forth and do anything like that. All you can really do is corner peek with a Nova. Because you shoot like boom, boom, boom. You gotta wait for that shot to be able to happen again. One thing you need to develop in this game is timing of all of the weapons. The most important one you have to think about is the op and how long it takes in between op shots. You're like boom, boom, and uh, with the Nova as well. And you're talking about pre-shooting the guy before he turns the corner when you're using an M4, and I think he was using an M4A4, which will be easier to use this technique. Really all you have to do is get it sort of in the the um, the vicinity of time when that player is going to peek. It's set up at the corner like that. You know the player is going to go by and just do a spray. Like that. And when the player peeks, he's going to walk into that spray. Alright? So if you have the player who's standing at this corner and he's just doing this. All you have to do is set up in a position like this. When he shoots, move out. So you have that little bit of time. Do a controlled spray, and part of that is just controlling the spray pattern of the weapon. Now you're going to use a little bit of ammo. Going to take a little bit of time to try to take him out like that. But if he decides to peek you during that period of time, he is 100% going down. You have a huge advantage because of that. You don't even have to think about it. Just hold the spray down as the player is turning the corner. We're downstairs where this player was. Now this is a different scenario because you have two corners to peek. You have the player who is... Standing in this position and doing this. It's taking a little bit of time. He can use this all he wants. Uh, in this situation, because there's two places he can go, you don't really have to, or it may not make sense, to hold down and spray like that because you can use your ammo as well. One thing he could have done, jumped over the side and pushed him from the other side. So it makes sense sometimes to, uh, to change up your position uh, based on what, your what the enemy is doing. Instead of just waiting for him to peek, you put yourself into the aggressive point of view. Like this corner, it's gonna be even for both of you. So if he turned the corner like this to try to hit the guy, may have worked in his favor. The T on the other hand, what he'll be trying to do is position himself so you're always behind this thing. So he'll just be moving around it like that. You just have to kind of fake him out. This round was terrible. 
And this is uh, sort of going to show how you set up as a CT side on Nuke. I'm actually planning on doing an extended tutorial about how to set up CT side Nuke. Um, what Momo really wanted to know about is how to deal with T side strategies and how to adjust accordingly. And this round is a perfect example of what not to do. So, we see the T's are going to be pushing outside. And watch this, they don't even smoke it off very well. Let's actually watch this in slow motion. Alright, so T's pushing outside. We have terrible smokes that don't even land. Really, the CT should be able to just shoot them on the cross, but these CT's not able to do it. They're throwing uh, pre-nades. That doesn't do anything. Maybe flash these players out would be good. There's a flash from Falcon. Now, T's going to try to cross. What do we see here as the T's try to cross? We see one, two, three vantage points from CT. Falcon pushing out pretty far here. Puts himself way exposed. Probably should have stayed inside of mini for that. So... Again, that's that that was like incredibly stupid to just run out there and charge the enemy. He knew where one of them was, but I mean, he could hear the rest of them. He knew that they were at red. He knew one was at the boxes. That is like 100% death to run out there. I have no idea why anybody would do that. So losing a player like that, you're screwed. There's not really much else that you can do. Now let's actually watch Momo because he's the guy who's decision making. We have to question here. So he's playing up inside of rafters, right? His job should be to watch hut. And in case they try to do an upstairs take. There's a bunch of T's going outside. Where can they go when they take outside is the question you have to ask. Okay, they can go mini to upstairs, leave a player to go uh, radio to heaven, which is a common thing. Or they could go all the way outside, all the way to hell, and take complete map control and go anywhere that they want from that position. Another thing that they can do if they smoke it off and cross and get to secret is to go down into secret, and which Momo is actually rotating to watch. So Momo is assuming, okay, they're crossing... I don't think he has an idea that his teammates completely royally screwed up there at outside. But he just says, okay, let's go downstairs and let's watch for the secret push. Which eventually, that's not what, what the T's actually do. They go into mini and plant, I think. So, again, the mini player, the one Falcon who ran outside and died, it was his fault that this all went down. Everybody on a team needs to be on the same page. It needs to be sort of a... a one-minded effort and when you have one loose cannon like that he died he lost his position and his position was watching squeaky and mini to make sure they can't push in upstairs uh he he pretty much opened up the doors for these terrorists to do whatever they want so like the floodgates are open the water is going to rush through so we have nobody watching mini to make sure that these guys can't go mini into the site one thing that momo could have done and probably should have in this situation is not jump down but continue to hold his position maybe called for the ramp player to rotate downstairs in case they take it and not worry too much about secret okay moving forward a little bit once momo gets down here he does something uh which makes a little bit of sense but it all like it may seem like it makes sense but it may be a little bit puzzling so he throws a smoke and he does so in complete vision of the terrace. Now, he probably would have gotten that kill off a of 411 if <laughs> interesting flash. If he didn't throw that smoke and just watch the angle, which a smoke here, I don't know why anybody would do cuz if you have a CT on these stairs and a CT watching the back hall, this is where you want terrace to funnel into. It's a good place to watch. Okay, so now Momo downstairs seems to seems to be waiting for them to try to go plant the bomb. So he waits here in this corner. I don't really like this corner. And this is very interesting because wait for the sound, wait for the audio clues. Momo makes an incredible mistake, which just a little bit of game sense, he could have been able to curtail. So here it goes. Let's fast forward a little bit since he hides in this spot for such a little, uh, such a long piece of time. 411 is actually searching for him right now. He knows there's a player here. He checked the vents both sides like five different times. Okay, there's the planting sound. Momo says, oh gosh, they're planting. Thinks it's at B. This is weird. Now, why is this weird? He did not hear the door open. He was in vision of the door and didn't see it open. There is no way a terrorist could have gotten into the site and planted without him knowing. So there is no reason to check the site. There's zero chance for a T to be inside of the site based on his intel, based on his positioning. Checking there is also what gets him killed. Because we see uh, 411. And check this out. 411 is right now standing in vision of Momo, but he's looking up. Look at this. Momo should have one because if we check right to the right of Momo he's visible this entire time and this is where he eventually gets killed from look how embarrassing that is 
And that is just game sense to know that the terrorists are taking upstairs, that they move through many, that you have nobody watching that. It comes down to communication with your teammates. Falcon really screwed things up. CTs continuing to try and take them down outside instead of just giving that position and, and readjusting, rotating to try to make something happen. So again, lots of different mistakes going down there. Uh, that's just a little analysis of the different decision making there of Momo and how he could have improved it. And just a little bit of game sense, a little bit of, hey, maybe it's impossible for them to be downstairs. Constantly keeping mindful of where all of the terrorists can be. You have to have like a mental map in your mind of Nuke Every little location that the terrorists can be based on your teammates' positioning, based on the tells, and that's something you need to develop over time by playing the game. Big thanks to Momo for sending in the demo. I hope learnings were accomplished and such. All right, let's get an owl vision. <laughs> um, don't, don't do that. I'm the war owl. And I still have no closer.